Hi, I'm Tom and this is Adult Game Reviews. So has this ever happened to you? You find a VN or a game and think, that looks cool. You think, let's give it a shot. You play what's there and fall in love with it. From the characters to the story, it just speaks to you. So you go and look for more of the game. Five years later, it's still not complete. Do you feel like you wasted your time or worse, your money? Well, you aren't alone. Let's discuss scam or scummy developers. How to protect yourself from losing your money or time. Just FYI, this is my criteria, the one that I personally look for. This isn't the only way to determine if the game is likely going to steal your money. But hopefully this helps you stay safe from being scammed. So I've had a lot of questions about how to identify scam games or scummy developers. So instead of calling out games that I think are scams, mainly because I don't want to label any developer by accident, I can tell you what I look for and how you guys can determine if the game is likely an avoid or wait for completion. One problem in the spicy gaming community is that it's hard to know for sure what a particular developer situation is. You have developers like Black Hans, the creator of The Inn, or AZ, the developer of Halfway House. The developer cycle for these developers is really, really long. However, both of these developers make the game part-time. Does that mean that they're scamming their community? No, absolutely not. They're very upfront about what they're capable of. The most common issues that leads developers doing scummy things? Greed. It's pretty simple. Are they taking longer to finish the game than they could based on their team, the income that they're making? Are they taking three months to release the game when they could do it in two? Are they releasing chapters and parts like chapter two, update three, version one every month? Or how about the developers that have only done tech updates without any new content in a long time? What's the point of all this? Hmm, I wonder. Could it be to drag out the development, which keeps people supporting as long as they can? I mean, if the game finishes, would you support a developer with the game being complete? I mean, maybe, but probably not. Oh, I almost forgot my personal favorite, remastering a game before it's complete. Now, a remaster of a game that isn't popular may be necessary to get more people interested. If it's a remaster of a popular game before it's complete, curious. So what do I do? First, I always check to see if there's any info about a particular game. There are so many Steam games where I can't find any info about the game at all. I mean, anywhere. For instance, what are the reviews if there's any? Does the developer have a website? Have they released the game anywhere else? If not, this is an immediate wait and see for me. If I can't find any info, I always wait for others to check out the game first. Just watch out for bot reviews, which are usually overly generic, like great game or best game I've ever played. Next, I always check the developer's Patreon, Subscribestar, or Steam page. The second criteria I look for is the developer's history. Does the developer have games that they've completed and how long did it take them and how were they received? What's the quote? The best indication of future behavior is past behavior? Why does this keep happening? I ask all my Patreon and Discord community who some of their favorite devs are and why. I will name some of those devs at the end. For instance, let's look at ILS Productions, the developer of Now and Then and the Interim Domain. ILS first released Now and Then in 2020 and completed Now and Then in March of 2022. So two years to complete Now and Then? That's really good, especially since it's 25 chapters. They are almost done with their second VN, the Interim Domain, which will likely end up taking probably a little longer than two years, which is still pretty good. So. Go to Steam, and if you see a game you're interested in, go click on the developer here underneath the description and look at the past games. There are quite a few Steam devs that will pump out bad games simply hoping that no one looks at all the other games they completed and how their reviews are mostly negative or mixed. Before we continue, please like the video if you like it and subscribe if you aren't. This is the first kind of video I've done like this, so hopefully you guys find it helpful. Let me know what you think down below. Okay, let's get back to it. The third criteria I look for is how communicative are they? If you're waiting for months for any development update or communication at all, yeah, it might be a scam. Also, when do they communicate is a constant drama. Everyone has a lot going on, but if you're supporting someone and there's consistently drama after deadlines have been missed, Yikes. Missing a deadline once isn't a big issue. Consistently missing it, that screams the developer just isn't very organized and I would stay away until it's completed. How frequently the developer updates their community is different than how often they update their game. Usually, and this isn't always the case, but if they don't communicate much with their backers, they aren't likely to update much either. So let's take a look at another developer. Eva Kiss, the creator of Good Girl Gone Bad and Our Red String. She started Good Girl Gone Bad in 2017 and version 1.0 was done in 2019. She started Our Red String around that time. She has been consistently updating her supporters weekly for the last seven years. That's a very good sign. So I'm a lot more likely to trust that they're gonna continue to do that than if they're brand new and haven't done it before. This brings me back to how often do they actually update their game. Let's talk about another developer that is doing really well with this. Let's discuss Daniels K. I haven't reviewed any of his games, which I need to remedy at some point soon. The current VN Daniels K is working on is Erotica. Let's just take a look at the updates so far in 2024. Episode nine, January. Episode 10, February. Episode 11. March, episode 12, April, episode 13, May, episode 14 in June, with episode 15 around the corner. Phil, 
This is fantastic. I don't expect every developer to be able to do this, but whether you like the games or not, Daniel's K is like the gold standard for releases. So for me, an ideal average development time with a decent size update is every three or four months. No less than 45 minutes of play time is what I consider decent. This way you have about three or four updates per year. Mad, 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 mad. Any less, I look at why. If the game is Daz 3D or Unreal Engine style renders, these are realistic renders that can look absolutely gorgeous. Those images take longer to actually create, which naturally increases development time, which makes sense. But that usually means I will wait for the game to get a lot further in development before spending my money on it, because it's not uncommon for really pretty games to never complete. Rest in peace, divergence beyond the singularity. Next, how big of a team does the studio have? Is it one person doing it part time, or is it a large team that is driving? dragging their feet. There are a few of those developers out there that have a large team or make a lot of money and come out with very few updates per year. I'm on to you, big man. <laughs> or my favorite, break down each episode into many parts. I hate splitting up episodes into multiple parts. At best, they try to come out with more frequent updates. At worst, it's a clever way to hide the fact that they're actually only coming out with one real update every six months. Oh, and they know who they are. Lastly, I look at how many Patreons do they have and how many games are they currently working on? One thing I hate is a developer working on multiple games at the same time with progress on any one of them being slow. It's much more consumer friendly to have one page for all the games. I wonder why you would make more than one Patreon. Curious. A few other things I look for, does the developer post a roadmap for each chapter or for the whole game? Or is this game going to be in development forever? The forever games. There are some games that I love that will likely never finish. And just ask yourself, do you have any idea if the game will ever finish? Or is it constantly going to be update after update after update until we die of old age? I am not a fan of how developers are rewarded for going slower, especially with the subscription models. What is the incentive of putting out a game sooner if they could say they fell behind and get two more months of subscriptions? absolutely nothing. So as consumers, we all have to be very picky about who we support and what we play. Just a disclaimer, one reason why I don't usually mention other more sketchy sites that offer games is there's usually something shady done there. As an example, there's a new website that claims to get you games cheaper, but please read through all the privacy policies because just like Nutaco, they take a lot more information than they need to. Let's be smart and make our community better. So some of the devs that my community mentioned they consider trustworthy are NLT Media, creator of Treasure of Nadia and the Genesis Order, Cozy Creator, the creator of Cozy Cafe, Love Joint, the creator of Shale Hill Secrets and many other games, Tor Productions, the creator of the Elseverse games, 395 Games, the creator of Mist and Covenant of Morn, Drifty, the developer of Leap of Faith and Euphoria, Drusk, the creator of Between Two Worlds, Charybdis, the creator of Eternum, RJ Rhodes, the developer of Come Home, and many, many more. Now there's no way to mention all the good devs out there. There's a lot of them. However, if you would like to mention any developer that you support and consider trustworthy, put it down in the comments. And if you are unsure, hopefully you can use this criteria to determine if you should stay away or at the very least wait for it to finish. If you think I missed any criteria, comment down below with what you do to make sure you don't support a scam or scummy game. I want to thank all my backers on Patreon and Subscribestar. And if you haven't seen my Shale Hill Secrets review, you can check that out right here. Thanks again. Until next time.